just come my way wherever I go Hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves finally in Paris, France. Or is it? Technically, this is Universal Studios Hollywood, and today's video is all about one of the most famous monsters in cinematic history, Frankenstein's monster. Now, if I didn't tell you that we were at Universal Studios Hollywood, it's a very good chance. You probably thought that this was the real Paris, but it's not. And if you look very, very closely, one of the dead giveaways is right down here at the end of the street, there's a giant purple castle. Super silly fun land. Definitely not Frankenstein's castle. If it wasn't for the giant purple at the end of the Paris street, you probably, like I said, wouldn't know any different. I mean, they got the Moulin Rouge here and a couple other different shops and bakeries. But we are here for the monsters. Yes, you can meet Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein here and sometimes even Dracula. When it comes to meeting the monsters, they kind of come out during the day. You would think they'd come out here at night, but they're probably staying away from people with pitchforks. Dracula, on the other hand, he doesn't really like to come out whenever the sun is shining. Kind of puts on a whole bunch of sunblock. And who knows if it will even show up on camera, but today we're going to try. And look who I found over here doing some window shopping at some musical instruments. Why, hello! <laughs> we are big fans of both The Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's Monster. We love you both. <laughs> Today we're doing a video all about you guys. In honor of the Halloween season coming up and the horrors and the beauty that you both are. Not horrors, I'm sorry, I don't mean to scare you. We love you. <laughs> For me? Well, thank you. The spiders. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. They're fake. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Friend. 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 <laughs> now, baby ghoul, the bride of Frankenstein gave me a flower, but of course I have to give it to you. Don't let her see you, though. Uh-oh. <laughs> They're beautiful, right? Oh! The reason we are here at Universal Studios Hollywood, I'm sorry, Paris, France, is because it's the birthplace of the Universal monsters, the monsters that we all know and love. Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster, Dracula. It all started here. Now, when it comes to tracking down the actual filming locations to this movie, there's barely any. We did one a couple months ago, it was probably about a year ago now, where we actually went out to the pond where the, Frank, where the monster threw the little girl into the water. Just recently, I discovered a little tidbit of information about the filming of Frankenstein that kind of blew me away, and I have to tell you guys about it. It's insane. Now this building isn't typically here at Universal Studios Hollywood, it's all in preparation for Halloween Horror Nights this year, one of our favorite Halloween events in the entire world. And this is one of the houses. Now, everybody knows that James Whale directed Frankenstein, but he wasn't the first choice. There was actually somebody else who was set to direct Frankenstein, and it's his vision, his creativity, his, his imagination that kind of gave us some of the most iconic locations for the movie. Today, 
we're going to be talking about the windmill. Originally, the job of directing Frankenstein was supposed to go to a man by the name of Robert Florey, who, at the early stages of making the movie, they actually had a screen test with Bela Lugosi as the monster, famously portrayed by Boris Karloff. But Universal ultimately decided to go with James Whale as the director and got rid of Bela and chose Boris instead. Interesting enough, Robert Florey went on to create another horror movie that is well known, known as Murders in the Rue Morgue but it's because of Robert Florey, we have the windmill. Now here's the fun thing about this. The windmill is real. Frankenstein's windmill is real. It was a real place in Hollywood. And in order to tell this story, in order to tell Robert Florey's story about Frankenstein's monster, we gotta leave Universal Studios Hollywood and go deep, I'm talking deep, into the history of Hollywood, back into the 40s. We met two out of the three monsters that you can meet here at Universal Studios Hollywood. We met Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. Dracula is a no-go today. But before we head down to the heart of Hollywood, deep into the heart of Hollywood, there's a few things I want to show you guys. The first one being this massive Exorcist poster. I'm a big fan of religious horror in the first Exorcist movie. Actually, Exorcist 1, 2, and 3. And uh, I want to like this movie. I want to like it. But I'm not too fond of the trailer. The poster is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, look at this thing. Right? All right, there's one more thing we want to show you guys before we head down to Hollywood. And it's on the outside of the park. When it comes to the classic monsters here at Universal, this is probably the biggest picture you'll find. And you can easily miss it, but it's actually here on the wall of the AMC cinemas here. Frankenstein's monster and the Bride of Frankenstein. I'm not gonna lie, every time we come to the park, I always look at it and admire it, just in awe. Man, I love the classic monsters. Now you can always come up here, you can walk right next to it, but you kinda get this really cool moving shot from the escalator. All right, now it's time to go to Hollywood. Now, if you made it with us to this point in the story, bear with us a little bit longer because this is gonna crack you up. Now, in order to tell this story properly, technically, we have to go back to the spring of 1931 well before the movie Frankenstein was actually lensed. Back whenever Robert Florey and a guy, a writer, by the name of Garrett Fort, wrote the first draft of Frankenstein. This is important. Now before we get too far into our story, let's get our bearings straight. That building right there you're looking at on the right, it's the Knickerbocker Hotel. We did a video on there. At the very top of it was the, the site of Harry Houdini's last Halloween seance whenever his wife Bess was trying to contact him. You see the building over there that's Capitol Records, and right in the middle of it, it's Pantages Theater. Now, if we were to keep going down this road right here, you can see that big intersection. That is Hollywood Boulevard. Now, if we turn around and walk up Ivar Street to the corner of Ivar and Yucca. Some people call it Yucca, some people call it Yucca. But right there at the corner, you're going to find this building that's over here on the left. This is ultimately the topic of our video today. Now, if we were to go back to the spring of 1931, the director, Robert Florey, the guy who was originally supposed to direct Frankenstein, was living in an apartment building right across the street from where we are standing. And he has gone on record and said that in his original script, the one that he wrote with his fellow screenwriter, they pulled the inspiration for the classic windmill scene from Frankenstein 
from a place known as Vanderkamp Bakery, which used to stand right where we are. So I think I'm leaving the best part out. There was a giant windmill here, a giant windmill that inspired Frankenstein. And we got pictures. Standing here at the intersection of Yucca and Ivar, like I said, some people call it Yucca, some people call it Yucca. But if we were to walk down this sidewalk just a little bit to try to line up the shot, this is gonna blow your mind. Now, again, that building on the left, that's the Knickerbocker Hotel. We already talked about that. Again, the video is gonna be in the description below, but you see this building that's on the right? This, back in like the 30s and 40s, was known as the Vanderkamp Bakery. And just looking at the building, I think it's still the same building, just revamped, restored. And I say this because you see that portion right there, how it looks like a, like a white, like rotunda. Well, back in the day, there was this giant, larger than life, menacing windmill right there. And here's the picture. How crazy is this? This is where the actual location of the windmill was that inspired the ending of Frankenstein. Mind blown. I tell people all the time, you never really know what's in your own backyard. And this is the perfect example of that because I just found out about this last night, woke up and I was like, baby girl, we gotta go and run around Hollywood telling the story of Frankenstein because of the windmill that used to stand right here. Now, when it comes to Vanderkamp, they were in business for quite some time and it was 1990 whenever they ended up filing for bankruptcy. But at this point, all of the windmills were taken down off of all the bakeries and instead they were just kind of showed up on their logo. Now, here is the part that's going to really blow your mind. The next time you eat a fish stick, fish sticks, right? Next time you eat a Vanderkamp fish stick, they still make them. You can buy them in the grocery store. Just know you are eating a piece of Frankenstein movie history. Wherever I come, I'm in love. Just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 